Well, now that you've gained some comfort level with the ISI and iDiagram application VI, I'd like to introduce the iDiagram portion of this application. Let's get a fair number of symbols going here. And I'd also like to reduce the channel bandwidth. I'd like to draw your attention down here to the received waveform. I have a starting cursor and an ending cursor available. And these are operated by the sliders over here. So this establishes a window in which this is the start time. You see how that moves back and forth. The time span establishes the width of the window. So that's our time span between those two cursors. Now consider this fairly short time window. Notice the shape right here. If you look carefully within the time window, you can see that same shape showing up. So I'm at this point, the, the eye diagram is plotting only a small fragment of our received waveform. Now as you start to increase the window size, again you see, if you look carefully, you can see that same shape being replicated up on top. Now you see what's happening here. The red trace actually is a continuation of the same received waveform, but it just happens to be inside what we would call our next bit interval. So now the red trace is essentially picking up where the white trace left off. Here we see it ending up at its high level. As we increase the time window just a little bit more and get into the third bit interval, then we see the green trace showing up. So really what's happening here is the eye diagram has a bit width uh, that, that corresponds to your symbol width. And we can then pick which portion of the received waveform to display in the eye diagram. And all those pieces then are overlapping. So I'm illustrating how you can, you can double check that various features that you see in the received waveform do in fact show up on the eye diagram. Now as we start to overlay many more bit intervals, then we see that the eye diagram starts to fill in. I'd also like to draw your attention to a cursor that shows up in the eye diagram window. And this is useful anytime you need to make measurements to uh, basically pin down a specific sample number as well as a specific amplitude. And you can either dial up the number, you can essentially click the cursor around as I just demonstrated. You can enter the number directly or of course you can simply grab the cursor itself and move it around. So manipulate the start time in order to get the eye plot centered in your window. Now let's try a different shape here. This is the sink shape. Notice that we have a fair number of curves that are going right through the center of the eye pattern. That's associated with this startup transient as we're picking up the very first sync pulse. If you get more into the steady state portion of the bit message, then we see that the eye pattern starts to get rid of that extra clutter. Again, you can adjust the start time then to center your eye pattern right in the middle of the plot. In this case, it looks like the audio, the auto scaling needs just a little bit of help. So you can always manually adjust that as needed.